Fuel is being used as a cash cow for national government's treasury. That's the view of the Democratic Alliance. It's been holding protests across the country today to urge government to implement its proposals to reduce the cost of petrol. But what is being proposed to deal with this matter? Kevin Mileham from the DA is joining us now to discuss this. Mr. Mileham, uh, good afternoon and thank you very much for your time. Before we talk about proposals that can assist in terms of the, the fuel price going forward. Can I get some reaction from you about the announcement a short while ago from government that one, it is extending the temporary reduction in the general fuel level by two months, the first month of June, down by 150 again, but in July to August down by 75 cents, and that it is also from the first of June removing the demand side management levy of 10 cents per liter as well as well proposing a decrease by 3 cents per liter in the coming months of the basic fuel price. What's your reaction to that? Good afternoon, Dan. Thank you. So, yes, uh, we've seen that the fuel price is now sitting at a record high of 24 rand and 17 cents per liter. And yes, the government has extended the subsidy on the general fuel levy. But it's our position that that general fuel levy is basically a corruption tax that is being used to fund ANC looting and corruption over the past 20 years. You know, the Zondo Commission identified 1.5 trillion rand that had been lost to corruption over the last two decades. And this tax, this general fuel levy, is probably the easiest tax for government to collect and the hardest for people to avoid. And all it's doing is driving South Africans into poverty. So you don't welcome the extension? Oh, we absolutely welcome the extension, but we believe that government hasn't gone far enough. We believe that the general fuel levy should be scrapped in its entirety and that there should be uh, efforts made to reform the road accident fund levy by allowing uh, motorists, businesses, taxi owners and, and the like who can prove a valid and comprehensive third party insurance that they should be allowed a tax rebate uh, on the fuel that they purchase. And then thirdly, we believe that the petrol price should be deregulated to allow competition in the sector, both at the wholesaler and retailer level. Okay, the road accident fund, you believe it's unnecessary, but some people believe government will need money to help people who are involved in accidents. We know that in South Africa, we have a high rate of road crashes. Well, I didn't say that the road accident fund levy was unnecessary, and I think that the road accident fund does serve a purpose, but it's been sadly mismanaged, and it is essentially bankrupt as it stands right now. What I'm proposing and what the DA is proposing is that in addition to the road accident fund levy, we allow that those consumers and businesses that can prove that they have a valid third-party insurance, uh, that they be allowed a tax rebate of the amount equal to the road accident fund levy on their annual tax returns. Now, that would allow the, the liability to move off government and onto the private sector, the private insurance sector, but it would also work out a lot cheaper for people who are filling their tanks on a daily basis, the likes of taxi owners, long distance truckers, et cetera, who are paying a fortune to, to this road accident fund levy and, and not seeing any benefit from it. Yeah, so you're making two points there that uh, give uh, drivers, motorists an option not to be part of it and secondly, manage it better and, and, and close any, any uh, possibilities of corruption with the road accident fund. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Now, the deregulation uh, of the fuel price, I mean, a few weeks ago, I spoke to Fuel Retailers Association. Some of the small uh, petrol station owners are worried that once you deregulate it, you are going to disadvantage many of the BE-owned uh, uh, stations because of, of capital. Because once you deregulate it, it becomes more like a free-for-all. I think there is, there is going to be a, a lot more competition in the fuel sector. But you know what? It's not saying to someone, you must charge a particular price. It's not saying to someone that you must deliver a particular service. It's allowing the market to determine what, what it wants and allowing competition into the market. So if you are able to sustain a price that's lower than others, uh, good for you. But 
I don't, I don't buy the argument that it's specifically targeting, targeting uh, BEE uh, uh, retailers. I, I don't buy that, that argument at all. I think that we need more competition in the sector. And I think the deregulation of the diesel price has shown how effective that can be. Okay. Now, in a statement earlier today issued jointly by National Treasury and Mineral and Resources Energy announcing the extension of the temporary reduction in the general fuel levy, they, 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 they make mention of the fact that uh, the revenue that's going to be foregone from the extension of the relief is around 4.5 billion rand. And unlike previously, this is going to be funded from the fiscus. So it's going to have to come uh, from somewhere. What's your reaction to that statement? Well, they're right. The general fuel levy uh, basically goes into the National Revenue Fund, which is a big pot of money that gets spent by government on all sorts of things, ranging from health care to education to policing to roads to whatever, whatever it may be. But here's the thing. The General Revenue Fund, the expenditure therein, has been grossly mismanaged. We've seen that over the years. So we've seen things like, uh, more recently, a 22 million rand flagpole. We've seen a 50 million rand donation to Cuba. We've seen VIP protection of 1.8 billion rand in the last financial year. These are things that South Africa can do without. These are things that are luxuries. They, they, they're not necessities. We should be focusing on what we need to do. We should be cutting our clock to fit, and we should be frugal in our expenditure. We should cut corruption and hold those accountable for corruption uh, to book and make sure that they are prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And only this way will we, we dig ourselves out of the hole that the ANC has put us in over the last 27 years. 3 Ren 93 per litre is the fuel levy. If you scrapped it in its entirety, that's how much less will be going into the coffers of SARS and per, 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 per collection. That's quite a big chunk of money. Where else do you think that money can come from? Because this country is still in a very much developing state. It needs every cent it can get. I understand the point you are making about mismanagement of funds, about corruption. Those points are taken. But, I mean, if you had to close the gap, what's the view of the DA? Where else could you go and secure that much money for the fiscus? Well, it works out to about 45 billion rand a year, Dan, and I think that there are a number of places that we could save money. For starters, we could save money on our bloated cabinet. We have one of the biggest cabinets in the world with, as I mentioned earlier, some of their, their uh, VIP protection costing in the region of 1.8 billion rand a year. That's not necessary. That's absolutely unnecessary. We need to look at things like catering. We need to look at travel. We need to look at everywhere where we can save money. And then we need to look at what we need to prioritize in order to accomplish that. Just uh, one simple example. We spent, uh, well, ESCOM spent uh, nearly 880 billion rand last month, in one month, on diesel just to keep the lights on. Now, if we were doing proper maintenance at ESCOM, if we were, were able to, to uh, upgrade our, our electricity infrastructure and, and provide the independent power producers and, and allow them into the market, uh, and do what needs to be done to bring additional megawatts online so that uh, ESCOM could do the maintenance it needs to do, then we wouldn't have had to spend 880 million rand on diesel in one month. Okay. Finally, uh, you undertook some pickets, some protest actions in different parts of the country today to make your point by urging government to implement the proposals uh, to reduce the cost of fuel in the country. How did they go? Were you successful in achieving your objectives today? Absolutely. South Africans are outraged that government is stealing their money, their hard-earned money. They're finding it harder and harder to get by on a monthly basis. They are finding it uh, difficult to make ends meet. And every single time that they, they just start to claw their way in, government introduces a new tax or increases the fuel price. We need to, to get to a point where government is delivering services, not stealing food and, and, and the like out of the mouths of children and consumers in South Africa. What's next for the DA regarding this battle over the fuel price? What's the next steps you're going to be taking? Today you were picketing, you've issued a statement, you've expressed your views now on this platform. I'm sure you, you'll be talking on others as well. What's the next steps? So, Dan, our next steps are we, we've written to the Speaker of Parliament and she has graciously agreed to 
a debate of urgent national importance on, on the fuel prices and the impact thereof. That will probably be happening next week. I'm not exactly certain when at this stage. We've also, in the process of uh, finalizing a private member's bill, a piece of legislation that we will be introducing shortly to deregulate the fuel price, and uh, that will go a long way to introducing competition in the sector. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Milehem, for your time. Kevin Milehem, of course, from the DA, just uh, giving us, sharing with us uh, the results of their uh, protest actions in different parts of the country today.